Okay, hello guys. Um, welcome to the show. Um, so this is the debut um, edition of um, the debut edition of um, the Isaac Show. Um, the Isaac Show is very, um, it's a very timely original show. Um, the the idea behind this is very simple. Um, it's a show where um, we actually celebrate, talk about, and um, go into the details of the stories about African creators, you know, those who are creating products and services. All right, so it's a show, but it's a show that is entirely life transforming. All right, so um, the uniqueness of the show is in the vulnerability of these creators, okay. Uh, in how exactly how they go into the details of how they create powerful products and services, especially um, those who have gone on to create companies, you know, and have gone on to employ um, tens, hundreds, and thousands of people. So, for today's show, we have um, Chidi Ngogu. Uh, I'll be bringing him on the show shortly. Um, okay, I think Chidi is here. Hi, um, Inkiru, welcome. All right. I think Chidi is with all my Hi, Chidi. Yeah, Can hi. you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Can you, hear you. can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Awesome. 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 Okay, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, yeah, I can. Great, 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 great. So, welcome to the Isaac Show. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically, I'll just um, reiterate the purpose of this show, uh, being the first episode. Okay. So um, it's a show that um, eventually we intend to actually get on TV. Um, but but it's a show that would be uh, syndicated across platforms. So it's not just um, on Instagram Live here. Um, um, this is basically like the first source. Um, so we're gonna have it on other platforms. But that's, by the way, um, the most important thing right now is actually the essence of the show. So the reason why we um, actually came up with the Isaac show is very simple. Um, it's because um, over the years, I have realized personally, um, especially when I was growing up, um, that we tend to celebrate the act of consumption than we do the act of production, especially across Africa. So you find out that uh, people are people are extremely excited when they buy a new product. You know, when you go out and buy um, buy an iPhone, you know, or you go out and consume Netflix. All right. So we don't think about the process of creating those products. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, we can actually be on the other side of being one of the creators of products that are being consumed and used also by people across the world. So that's really the essence um, of the show. Uh, and also particularly because I realized that um, 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 in Africa, we do so much of um, idolizing entrepreneurs uh, instead of actually getting into their heads, especially um, um, looking into uh, the things that they've tried and they failed at. And, and that's because um, it seemed to us as though people just rise without failing at all. So we want to be able to actually um, go into the details of the challenges people actually feel, the real life challenges that people feel, face when they try to come up with um, inventions, products, services, brands, and the likes. So <clears throat> welcome, Chidi. Welcome to, to the show today. Um, so we have an hour, um, an hour of which I've actually already spent about five, spent about five minutes, but we'll, we'll try to maximize it. So um today we want to talk about you and the amazing work that you are doing um like i said earlier chidi is the founder of publicia but before we go into the show proper i would allow him to introduce um, himself briefly so chidi welcome to the show once again uh and can we get to meet you properly uh i'm chidi uh but i'm not the founder i'm not the founder of publicia i'm co-founder it means i founded co -founder, it. yeah yeah, yeah. CEO. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I founded it with my twin brother. So yeah. So uh, um, I'm I'm a tech entrepreneur, uh, serial tech entrepreneur. That means I 
I create, grow, and exit tech um, businesses. And so Publisher is my third um, tech startup. Um, I'm also a software developer. That means I spend an awful time of my life um, coding and developing new products. And I also, um, I'm a mentor uh, and advisor. So I spend a lot of time at, uh, mentoring uh, younger individuals, especially those that are uh, aspiring uh, entrepreneurs. And then I advise yeah. um, disruptive companies uh, in Africa in across different uh, different industries uh, from e-commerce down to uh, agriculture. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, I went through your profile and I saw something um, pretty uh, striking. Uh, and it was the fact that um, you started entrepreneurship um, when you were a teenager. And yeah. um, since, you were, since you were 19 years old, um, I think um, from a lady of 19, thereabouts, you, you've sold two companies, right? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about growing up and um, um, how, how was life growing up, basically, before we talk about um, starting out as, a, as an entrepreneur. I, I'm an ordinary kid. So when I say I'm an ordinary kid, I, I lived a pretty much ordinary life, normal life like everybody did. Where did you grow um, up? I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria. So um, I had the opportunity to have uh, a personal computer while growing up. So um, I think that was one of the, the, the things that helped me because uh, seeing a computer, I was fascinated, you know, on the on what I could do with it and the extent in which uh, I could do, you know, I could do something with it. So usually people always look at uh, compu uh, computers as uh, data processors or as uh, things that they can use for publishing, depth of publishing. But I was, you know, I was, I was, eager to push um, beyond the, you know, the, the regular way in which people use computers to see if I could maybe use computers to uh, code and develop products. So when I was 13, I, along with my twin brother, we began to learn how to code. Uh, we learned uh, how to code in HTML, CSS, and then, then JavaScript. When we were 16, we decided to um, go into video game development. Uh, so we learned how to code in GML. GML is like a basic form of, uh, it's an advanced form of basic. So basic is also is a, is a, is a regular pro programming language. And so um, we learned how to code in GML, which means game maker, lang game maker language. And it's, it's used to yeah. focus on um, building uh, video games. That was when we started our first uh, tech company called Niger Boy Interactive. We, we created um, video games for uh, Windows. So we created this um, two, 2D space shooter that that combined uh, gamification and AI to help uh, teenagers like ourselves understand the concept of global warming and how to mitigate the challenges. Um, at, at 19, uh, when we were at the University of Lagos, we decided to uh, discontinue uh, the video game development uh, company. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let, let, me, let me pause you a little there. Um, yeah. um, so you, you saw two companies when um, you were 19. Um, tell me about the first company that you sold. It's, um, um, one of the companies is actually called, was called Lightbook, right? Yeah. Was, was a social networking website. Yeah. Yes. Tell me about that. Explain me about founding, um, um, creating that um, products, um, and um, tell me about um, tell me about the story of that product basically before you sold it. Yeah, so Lagbook was it was it, it was a, it's a, it was a thing of fun. We just wanted to make we just wanted to just do something that grows, you know, just build something that grows. And the i uh, the idea at that moment was we were creating a we were part of a dating site uh, development company. We were building a, a dating site with a, with a college roommate of ours. However, we decided that we wanted to do something more, you know, something something. More that had more impact within our, 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 our environment, and then we created lab. You were, still uh, in school. you were still in school at this time, right? Yeah, I was. We're, we're um, freshers, we're freshmen at the University of Lagos. Yeah, okay, physics. fantastic. Yeah, okay. And so we created lab book. Uh, it's actually back, lab book is a background for ladies and gentlemen book. Uh, it was a social network for students of the University of Lagos. And, okay, um, we had uh, 30,000 students uh, sign up to the platform within six months. And then we realized that if we continued uh, live, uh, as a social network for Unilag you know, like students, we're not going to um, grow because everybody on, in, on school campus were already on it. And so we had to expand and, uh, our, our demography. And then we uh, expanded to uh, the public. And we had a million users within three years. Um, 
Wow. During our final year in school, we decided to um, sell it. And then we sold it to a Canadian tech company called Gospel Limited in January okay. 2013. Okay, tell, tell me about why, tell me about the process of selling it. Um, why did you decide to sell a product? I mean, you started these products, and um, um, as a Nigerian, a young Nigerian, you, you created a product that had over a million users, registered users, and then you decided to sell it um, to a company. Why did you make that decision to sell? Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, the, 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 where where you think it would actually scale, like Facebook or Twitter, you know, I mean, those yeah. kind of products. So what was the idea behind selling it? Yeah, so selling a uh, lag book was, uh, was, was just, it was an, a normal decision because we realized that um, we, we had a million users. However, we were not converting them to, uh, we were not making as much money as we expected. So we're super popular. However, I think we're, because we're too young, we didn't know how to convert them into users, uh, into uh, revenue. And so the bills of you know handling a social network that popular, you know, was very 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 expensive. And so we said to ourselves, okay, uh, instead of having to run out of money and then get bankrupt, you know, and then shut down the social network, why don't we sell it to someone who has you know loads of money to push into it and continue in the growth of the company. And then um, we got a lot of offers from different uh, people. However, we were looking for that for that person who was who was ready to keep the company intact and keep the company, you know, um, like keep the, the the brand name and continue growing the company. And then uh, we got this uh, Canadian yeah. entrepreneur who said, "Okay, guys, I want to I, I want to continue with Lagbook. I want to keep growing this company." And then we sold it to him. However, I, he didn't keep on. He didn't keep to the end of the bargain. He eventually changed the name of the company, and then um, eventually uh, the social network died off. Yeah. Wow. How much did you sell the company at, at, at that time? Uh, we sold the company at that time for uh, ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so now with, with the benefit of hindsight, do you think that um, if you had um, if you had waited a little while, maybe found some mentors or some uh, who who would be interested in um, investing um, some skill or um, advisory um, services, do you think um, things would have been different? Do you think that um, you could have grown it to something uh, big, massive today? Well, from like I said, I'm a I'm a serial entrepreneur in nature, so I do not do things for like for like forever. Like I don't, I am not the kind of person who creates companies and decide to um, stay with it forever. So my my idea is just grow it, uh, get to it to a certain uh, level, and then you know get exited and start something else. So I love I love creating new things. I love you know my children and I we love you know we love the process of starting afresh, you know starting from scratch and then building something up. That's the we have that we enjoy that thrill in doing it, and so you know it, it, I think we got to a point where we said to ourselves we wanted to start something new. You know we you know three years of running this uh, social network, we wanted to start something new. So even if I even believe even if we had the money to keep running the company uh, indefinitely, at some point we're going to still exist it here. Okay, I understand. Um, okay, so 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 from that point on, um, um, uh, what 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 did you decide to do next after Lago? Yeah, so after that book, um, we decided we were just figuring out what what next what, you know we, we wanted to do. Then my mom uh, was sent a prayer book to my dad in the United States, and so we said to ourselves, okay, she had to you know buy a prayer book and send to my dad over in the United States. Why don't we create a kind of platform where you know people like my dad who always try to look for some for for, for a prayer guide or a prayer companion, you know, where he can always log on and then he, and find the you know, quick ways to say a prayer. So we created a, 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 a platform called Prayer House. So Prayer House uh, used uh, the, you know, script, the verses from the scripture to generate prayers for people who don't know okay. how to say prayers. And then we categorize it into different uh, types of prayers. Uh, we had 200,000 users within four months. And that was, uh, it was acquired by an American uh, non-profit company called Ten Dogs Charity uh, within four months, yeah. So you sold that off also? Yeah, we sold it within four months, yeah. It was the first Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, um, um, and um, how much did you sell this one at the same? Uh, we sold it for uh, $40,000. Interesting. So, I mean, at, at that point, I mean, what year was this? 
Uh, this was 2013. 2014, 20, 2014, actually, 2014. So, I mean, what was the feeling like for you after, after I mean, selling one of the products from $40,000 after that time? What yeah, did you do? Was, I mean, yeah, so it was, it was something we knew was going to happen because uh, it, grew, it was going so fast. And so we said, okay, this stuff is going to easily get acquired. And so when we sold it, we were expecting it. Uh, and then after we sold it, we, we like said, okay, let's do something different from tech entrepreneurship. You know, it's like this thing is getting too boring. Like, we're, okay. like why don't we try and do something different? So I began okay. to, uh, I started writing. I, I wrote a couple of novels and my twin brother uh, went into the music studio and then started becoming a musician. While we were okay. uh, in the creative industry, we discovered there was a gap and that there was no real platform that helped, you know, creative, especially first-time okay. creatives, launch their career, you know, independently. And that was when we came together again and started publishing. Okay. So, I mean, so you started, I mean, were you still in school at this time or you, you had finished uh, your no, first no. degree? We, Live book was acquired when we were in our final year in school. So, Prey House was after we graduated from school, from the university. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we were out of school already. Okay. 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 Um, so, but basically, um, the the constant thing about the products you were building was the fact that it, they were created by yourself and your brother, right? Yes. Pretty much created by yourself and your brother. So, how did you gain out the tech skill to do to create these products? Like I said, we, 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 we set up our software developers before we went into entrepreneurship. We were just, uh, from the age of ages 13 to uh, 19, we were just basically developing things. You know, we can wake up in the morning, develop a new website, wake up in the morning, develop a platform, wake up in the morning, develop a game. We just, that's all we just did. We wake up in the morning and develop something. You know, and we were not even, we, we were not even thinking about making money from it. We were just developing it. We just enjoyed developing things. And I think it was at the age of 19, we said to ourselves, we wanted to start making money from what we were developing. So uh, pretty much, you know, after that time, we had the skills to develop whatever we wanted to do. Yeah. So it was just, it was easy for us. I think, and I think uh, it's good that we set up as uh, developers because else we would have spent a lot of money in product development. So, yeah. So now, basically, how did you gather these skills? I mean, at the start, I mean, when you were very much younger. Um, did you yes. did you go to, to a training school or you had someone come teach you um, coding at home? How exactly did this happen? So uh, the idea, you know, the idea to learn HTML came from when we were, so there's this textbook we had where we were uh, in, uh, in secondary school. And, and I think I was in JS2. And then, okay. then we got to a part, we, you know, we, we always followed the textbook from the front page to the back page, right? And that's how the teacher follows the textbook. But the teacher got to the to the to the chapter about uh, creating websites and jumped the chapter yeah. and then went to the next chapter. And so my children and I said, "Why did we jump this chapter? You know, so let us try and read it on ourselves and understand why we had to jump this chapter." Then we discovered okay. that the chapter is about creating websites. And so we had a, a laptop, a, 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 a desktop at home, and so we always sat before it and you know learned how to you know. So we read from the book, we applied it. And then when we were done with what we were learning from the book, we decided to go online to learn more things. So there was this uh, hack that someone told us about. He said, if you want to learn how to create websites very fast, you know, do yeah. the page source. So go to an amazing website that you see, then click on the, you know, right click the mouse button and then click on yeah. the page source. Then you're going to see yeah. the source code behind the website. And that way you get to understand how the website was built. And so we kept, you know, after we were done with the, web, you know, with the textbook, we, get, we kept going to websites that we love and then find out the, how they were being made. Like and source then, code. Exactly. And start, I start coding them ourselves, you know, look at the source code and understand, you know, the orders this do. So what we do is that we, we put the source code in our, our editor, then we take, we take off a word and see what happens. So we now know the importance of a particular, you know, section. So we take off, you know, we just keep removing and see what it does, you know, what the, re the reaction is. So more, it's more like reverse engineering it. We were just always like, okay, take this off. Let's see what, 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 what gets missing on the web page. So then we know that that stuff, you know, affected this. So that's how we kept learning. And that's how we learned CSS. That's how we learned J and, uh, HTML more. We, we learned JavaScript. It was just like that. It was more of self-taught, yeah. Mm, amazing. And this, this was at, at what age? Uh, this was um, from 14 to 16, yeah. So would you say um, starting, I mean, I mean, your having to start early 
contributed largely to some of the successes you experienced today? I mean, yes, some definitely. Of gathering uh, these skills very early in your teams. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Uh, starting early is always an edge. You know, I always say, you know, when you start early, it's always an edge for you because you yeah. see. Um, you see some people, you know, trying to learn coding now. It's 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 the the the, the ease in which you learn coding when you are thirteen it can be the same ease you learn coding when you are, you know, twenty nine or thirty. Absolutely. You know, a thirteen year old Absolutely. person has a, a very a very a magnetic brain that is always trying to capture information very quickly. So yeah. Absolutely. All right, fantastic. So now let's talk about. So you, I mean, you you sold lag book ten thousand dollars. You sold um um what's the other one now? Um. Pay us forty thousand dollars, you know, teenagers. Now, public here. So, how exactly you said? Um, how exactly did you did you um um hide it, um the public here model? What was what was what inspired it? How did yeah, you like I said, uh, Okay, so um, what happened? So how we started public here was when. You know, I told you like my train. My train was. No, into I, music. I, I, I understand that. that. It was at the point when you decided to take a break. Your brother wanted to sing. You wanted to write, and then you needed a platform. You know, to sell your your works, right? Yeah, but I'm actually, talking about actually. actually okay. it, it was not because we needed the platform to sell our works. The problem was that my brother lost a lot of money. You know, trying to uh, distribute his book. Really? So, he dist dist so he distributed his music with TuneCore. Uh, but when the money was to come to him, then the, he realized that the, they primarily paid uh, royalty via PayPal. And so he could not receive wow. the money that way. So he had to tell them to use check payment, which was the other, the other alternative. But then mm -hmm. uh, the check never came to him. So he reached out to TuneCore to find out what was happening. Then they told him that the check has already reached him and he has already taken the money. And he said, how? Wow. They did. Inv they investigated, found out someone in Oslo, Norway used a fake ID, took his money. And so my twin said, okay, clearly there's no platform for us. Why don't we create that platform for, our, you know, for African creatives? And that's how we this for them. Okay. So, and then off you go, off you, I mean, off you went to create a publisher. So t t t tell us about the process of um, making this happen. I mean, you, you're a coder, your brother also codes. So... How do you share the work, basically? Who does what? So, uh, my brother enjoys coding, and I do. He enjoys the, the, the coding side, so he enjoys it okay. more than I do. So, uh, he, he became CTO of the company, and I, I enjoyed the, the, in pushing the brand forward, you know, growing the brand. And so, I took the, 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 the position of CEO because I was like, okay, so I'll be the face, I'll be the guy that pushes the brand. Since he's not the kind okay. of social media person, you know, so he just yeah. uh, handles this, uh, the, the, the technology. And then we just, we kept, you know, we kept working on the product. Um, um, you know, it, Lab book, uh, uh, probably said it didn't start the way it is right now. So it said, it's, it, it's, we iterated a couple of times. You know, the first you know, version, we didn't have login. The second version had login. However, however, you can't register. Then the third version, you can log in and register and then do everything automa automatically. You know, yeah. so yeah. It's, we kept got working on the, yeah, we got, we kept working on it, yeah. Okay, so um, someone is asking, um, what does publicity do? So can you talk about, basically about, um, Obviously, what it does, the products. So uh, let me let, let me see if I can explain this in the in the easiest, uh, the clearest uh, way possible. So we work with sure. creative people, we work with writers, we work with musicians, we work <laughs> with filmmakers, and we work with uh, video game developers. So for example, you have a book, or you have a music, or you have a, a short film, or a, or a feature film, or you have a, a video game, and you want to make money out of it. You've created it now. You want to make money out of it. So Publisia will help you to distribute this content. So we have we have we have partner stores like for books we distribute to, to places like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Google Play Books, uh, uh, Kobo Books. You know, uh, for music we distribute to places like iTunes, Spotify, Deezer. Uh, for for uh, films we distribute to places like um, Hulu TV, uh, iFlix, and for games we distribute to places like Steam and uh, Itch.io. So we are more like an aggregator. We distribute your content to uh, platforms, uh, to platforms where you can get more visibility and then you know make more money. And then we we collect your royalties together and pay to you at the end of the month. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so I mean. Um... I mean, so you, like, you started for publicity. So how has the journey been? I mean, I mean, from from the points where it all started. I mean, to now, tell us about it. Tell us about the journey. The story about the journey. So the journey has been more than I expected. You know, when I when we started publicity, we 
we didn't even we, we didn't really think much about like we just saw it as a place okay we just help best of creative people what year was this in 2017, August 2017. So, 2017. Okay. Yeah. And the question is, the question is that these days, when I go back to, uh, when I go back to older posts that, that I made about public here, I'm surprised, you know, with the growth it has, you know, it, it has had because I, you know, we didn't really think much about like, you know, getting so popular or doing or making or helping so, thousands of creators or making thousands of dollars. You know, our mind was just, let's help as much as people as we can, yeah. we can help. Then eventually we realized that this was uh, a, a sort of, you know, a sort after a solution. People were after, okay. were looking for it, and so we had a lot of creative signing up to the platform. You know, uh, so it, well, I would just say that it, it happened better than we planned. Yeah, better than we planned. Yeah. Okay. So, so how many how many users do you have um, um, on on Publisher as we speak? It's a it's a it's a right it's a quite tricky question because. So um, the amount of users that people that come to our platform are not the kind of are not all the users that we distribute their content for. So, uh, for example, you can send, you can send up to publish here. You submit your content. However, we decide not to distribute it because we be, okay. we think it's not going to sell. You know, or we believe it's not going it's not it's not marketable. So so far we've onboarded over five thousand creatives. So that means that. We've worked with five, over five thousand creatives. However, we have so much, you know, more than you know, several thousands of, of creative. I think I think about fifteen thousand that have submitted their content to us so far. Wow. Okay. So so what are the what are the basic um um statistics uh, for publisher at the moment in terms of um, um revenue in terms of growth? Yeah. So far. So um we have five thousand creatives on the platform. Uh, we've distributed eight thousand contents. Uh, we've recorded forty-seven million. Uh, let's, let's say we've recorded about fifty million um, downloads and streams, and uh, we've generated over two hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so um, I'm going to take you a little um, uh, back to um, um, the Lark book product that you sold, right? So um, someone is asking that uh, you were able to generate. Um, a lot of users, you know, um, and then you, you also had one, over one million users on on your social media platform as a teenager, you know. So someone is saying, um, asking, how were you able to amass users so fast? What should uh, new creators do to amass users? I mean, they, I mean, okay, for instance, someone has a product now. The product is very good. People are using the products, but maybe not as fast as the um, um, creator wants it. So what are the what are the things to to be done? to actually fast track having users so, you know come sign up the product so uh I'll, I'll give you i'll give them a couple of story and how we grew uh we got our first thirty thousand uh, users on, on lab within six months so like yeah. if you're trying to create users if you're trying to get people to use your platform ask yourself questions like this you know who's my ideal customer and where can i find them once you've answered that question you you, you can easily get you know get them to, to come on, on board so, for example, we knew that our okay. users were Unilag students. If you're a Unilag student, then you are your target customer. So we asked ourselves questions like, where can we find them? How, how do they, you know, we try to understand how a day in a Unilag student's life is. So we spotted uh, a cyber cafe. So this cyber cafe had thousands of students entering, going into it every day to browse, to solve the internet yeah. and come out. And so we said yeah. to ourselves, okay, so people who go into this cafe are looking, tr are trying to access the internet. So that means that they are not only Unilag students, they have access to the internet. And so they are, yeah. they are, they are so ideal for us. And so we yeah. met the, the owner of the, of the cyber cafe and said, you have over 50 computers, right? Why don't you go to all, can I go to all these computers? And make sure that the homepage of each com of each browser is lagbook.com, and then in return they help you build a website for free. And yeah. he, he didn't see he didn't he didn't think it's going to do it's going to do so much magic for us. And so he said okay. And so we make sure all the computers there was lagbook.com as their homepage as a default you know, homepage. And so when people come to the to to the to the, the computer and open the browser, lagbook loads out for them. And so they're like, what is this? And before they, you know, people start signing up. And we discovered that we had over over, over five thousand users within two weeks from that cyber And wow. then we said, okay, why don't we, you know, look for more places to get these people. Then there was this campus magazine called uh, Show You Know Now. It was really popular in school. People were, was reading the campus magazine. Again, the yeah. owner of the magazine didn't have a website. So we reached out to him because he was uh, a student of our faculty. And so we said, uh, 
you don't, you don't have a, a website. Why don't we build, build a website for you for free? And then you put us on the front page of your magazine. And he said, okay. Amazing. And so we did it again, and that was and the rest was history. And we, we just be, began to grow. When we got to 30,000 uh, 30, users, um, going out of Unilag was very easy for us because we, you know, you actually started telling other people that, okay, now you can join this platform. You know, it's open to everybody. And people wanted yeah. to be part of uh, a social network that they can meet you like students, especially you meet you like girls. And so yeah. that was a driving point and everybody kept, you know, signing up and then everything just kept moving up from there. Amazing, 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 amazing. Okay, so let's let's come back to public here now. Um, 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 I mean, I, I also noticed that um, um, public here, has, has actually enjoyed a lot of um, um, accolades, you know, from different national newspapers, um, um, different grants, you know, and, and the likes. Um, how do you position your startup or your company, you know, for global opportunities such that you effortlessly, naturally attract them? You know, what, what do you do differently? Yeah, so... Uh... Like I, I said, it's, it's the tell your story that matters, right? Uh, so let me give let me give you an example. So there are two there are two taxi drivers, and they all they do is they wake up in the morning and they drive people uh, around NY uh, NYC. They they, they they wake up wake up in the morning and then drive their yellow cab around NYC. And then yeah. you know you're asked you yeah being asked what do you do for a living? And one of them says. I drive a taxi cab. He's, he's right, right? But that is the way he decided to tell his story, that he drives a taxi cab. Yeah. And they asked yeah. the other person, what do you do? He said, I wake up in the morning and I pick up uh, important people and take them to important places where they can do important things and change the world. You know? Amazing. So they are doing the Perfect. same thing. However, the story they are telling is completely different. Different. So, it's the way you tell your story that matters. So what we are doing at Publis here, we are an aggregator, we help uh, creative make, make money. However, it's the way you tell it that matters. You know, you, you, when you're telling your story, you have to create empathy among, you know, where, to, to whoever is reading it. Let them understand the impact you're, you're making. Don't just say, oh, we make uh, Publis here, we help creative, uh, we make money for creative people. You're not really telling the story. So when you, you know when you tell a story that makes them see beyond just making money and see the impact you're creating in society, and so that's what we yeah. do. We tell the story in such a way that they can understand clearly the impact you're creating in society. And so you know if you can look if you look if you can, if you can look at your venture you know properly and understand um, how you can tell the story in such a way that it's uh, it shows the the maximum impact, then to get grants and awards uh, are just practically easy for you. What's the future for publisher? What's 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 the what's the current valuation if you do have any? And then what's what's the future plan for publisher basically? Uh the valuation, uh, it's it's it, I wouldn't say the valuation of publisher. It's it's not it's not popular <laughs> it's not popular knowledge. However, but, uh, but you know this is the Isaac show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would just say it's it's at least it's it's several. It's, okay, give us give us give us a relative figure. Not the not not the exact figure. Okay, so the <laughs> idea the idea basically is um GD, the idea is very simple, right? Um yeah. I've I've probably realized that um, um how do I put this now? I personally realized that um, success has a way of giving you confidence, right? When you succeed at at something, you tend to believe that um, you almost can fail um, at the next thing. However. Because we hardly, um, we hardly, I mean, we hardly see young people talk about their stories. So um, it's for for this reason, it's very difficult for other young Africans to really believe. You know, um, one of the things that grief that really grieves me about young Nigerians, young Africans, is that um, um, we have too many people out there who are doing nothing, who actually have potential to do more than some of us are doing. That's the truth. Okay. And the truth of the matter is some of these guys can actually be encouraged when they hear just with simple stories, basically, because I, I believe stories 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 do beyond inspire, they transform, they, they they stories challenge people to come out of their you know hiding place, to dare things, to do things basically. And that's the whole idea. So I, I do understand for well, if you can give um an estimate or maybe a relative figure, that that would be fine. So yeah. 
it's a, uh, the estimate. So it's at least it's at least two million dollars in in valuation. Yeah. Currently. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. So 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 what's what's the future plan for 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 Mister Basically, and uh, are you going to be selling anytime soon? Also, I mean. Definitely, Since, um, uh, definitely, definitely, um, is going to get acquired, uh, because wow. Uh, so I really? know definitely is going to get acquired. Yeah. So if I'm ready to acquire now, are you ready to sell, sell now? For real? Um, I don't know about now, but I know it's definitely going to get acquired. And when the time comes, I would know that the time, is, you know, it's it's the time is here. You know, you know, the moment where you say to yourself, okay, I want to do something different, you know, and then you you know you sell. Yeah. It. So definitely. Definitely will get acquired. Uh, the question is when, but I know definitely will get acquired. Yeah. Okay. So, so what's the future plan basically? What's the what's the, what are, the are there are there any things you're doing currently now that you want to change? Are there new things you want to introduce to the products? Are there new you know initiatives you want to add? Are there new um, features you want to add? Yeah. So we started offers uh, a platform where we work with writers and musicians, but then we incorporated filmmakers and video game developers. However, we are focused on how we can how we can create a gender balanced uh, society. So we, we we discovered that earlier uh, about seventy six percent of our creatives were, uh, were were male creators. So now we're trying to focus more on how to get more cre uh, female creatives on board. And so the the the, the mission of Publis here, if if by twenty thirty I'm still running. I'm still the person that's running public here. The mission is that uh, we are going to ha uh, we we would have served at least two million creatives, and that one million of them is uh, female creatives. That means that male creatives and female creatives play an equal role in in yeah. in, in, in the development of public here because we're always we're looking for a gender balanced society. Gender balance, amazing. So, so so the product is able to benefit from the perspective of both you know both. Okay, awesome. So. Now let's talk about you as a person. Um, um, you happen to be someone with uh, many ideas, you know. Uh, uh, you, of course, as a serial entrepreneur, you come up with idea, an idea. You, you um, convert the idea into a product. You sell it off, and you move on to the next idea. How do you receive your ideas? Ah well, so I received the ideas based on, um, let's say, on um, when I when I identify a, a a problem or a gap in the market is is as easy, easy as that. So I can wake up and then discover that uh, maybe maybe I had a very bad customer service, you know, somewhere, and then I'm like, okay, obviously something has to be done, you know, something has to be done here, right? Or maybe yeah. I. Uh, I just, you know, I just discovered that, okay, maybe something, you can wake up in the morning and discover that you're trying to hire a, a carpenter, right? But then you just can't find the right carpenter. And then you realize, okay, there's a pain point here, right? So that's how it, it comes. It, it's not like, it's not divine. Inter, it's not like divine. The ideas are not being sent from heaven. You just wake up one morning and discover that, okay, I'm trying to do this, but then I can't do it. So yeah. I think I have, I have to be the person to solve this. Yeah. Okay. Great, great, great. Um, so what, what would you say, I mean, I, I also know many people who have ideas, powerful ideas, right? I mean, I mean it's really powerful ideas, uh, but who are, who are finding it very difficult to really, you know, uh, make that transition from ideas into products or into a service or into a business or into, you know, whatever. So what, what, what would you say to this set of, of people from your personal experience? The easiest way to convert an idea into uh, into a business model is by asking the the person the, the customers how you know what what they want. So I have I've seen people that you know create an idea in their head and then decide to just go straight and building the product. There's a very huge chance that you're going to fail at you know because the product is not for you. So yeah. once you have an idea in your head, the the, the next step is to validate that that I, that idea is is worthwhile. So you meet your target customers, the people that you believe that will use this product. And ask them how does a day in your life look like, and try and understand if there's any in, in if there's any point in that day that they experienced any uh, any inconvenience, and then try yeah. and ask yourself a, a question: How can I solve that inconvenience, or how can I add value yeah. to them? Because typically, there's two ways in which you can build a business. If you're giving, if you're helping your target customers uh, to make money, or you're, you're helping them to save money, you know, that's the two. That's the, the easiest way to make a business out yeah. of something. You must either be helping them make money or save money. 
So you, you just look at, you just ask them, you know, you must ask them what, how their a day in their life looks like. And then try and pick out, you know, from that, from that, uh, from that information, what you think that they need, yeah. But an idea, is, it has to be validated, you know, before you can then, you can turn it into a product. And when, you know, once you, are, you have an idea, okay, this is what, this is, this is the pain point, this is the problem they're, they're experiencing. Make sure that whatever you build solves that problem 100%. Because I, I see some people tell me, this is a problem statement for our company. This is the solution. However, the solution does not in any way solve the problem. So you make sure that whatever that, what, you know, whatever problem you've identified, your, your solution solves that problem at least 100%. Amazing. Okay. Um, um, most of the rest of these questions, uh, our questions, they would put further on, on you as a person, basically. Um, 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 because once you get to um, know how you think as a person, um, your processes, your, 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 so, so, so starting with this, um, I know that um, every day is not the same. But on a normal day, what's, what's like your daily routine as a person? What, I mean, when you wake up in the morning, what's, do you normally, what would you normally do naturally? And then, of course, what are your basic daily routine as a person? Well, uh, in the morning, I can wake up. I, mostly, when I wake up in the morning, I, the first thing I just do is I check my emails. And I try to respond to emails as quick as possible because I don't like keeping emails for too long because I believe that whoever sent me the email has, uh, you know, had, you know, yeah. they have things that they are doing. And so I respect whoever, you know, their time. And so I respond to any email that I believe is worth responding to. So I quickly make sure that my, my, my inbox is completely responded to, you know, within 24 hours. Then I spend the rest of the day asking myself questions like, okay, I just mostly focus on growth rather because I'm, 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 I'm a growth freak. I'm always thinking about how I can, I can get from point A to point B. So I wake up in the morning and ask myself, okay, so this is where we are right now. You know, is there any kind of partnership we can do or any product launch we can do or any, you know, what can we do to, you know, from, to move from this point to another point? And so yeah. I just, I just constantly brainstorm when I figure out, uh, uh, a way to do it, then I reach out to do it. Maybe if it's a partnership, I reach out to whoever, whatever organization I, I, I think, you know, and then I reach out to them and say, okay, can we partner to achieve this? If it's uh, a product launch, I sit down together with my team and then we figure out uh, how the product is going to look like, you know. So it's just, I just mostly figure out how, how the, this is where the company is. The question is, where can the company get to next? So I'm always constantly thinking about the growth of the company. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's your what's your personal definition of um, what does money mean to you? As what, a person, what, what, does, what does money mean to you? Money. Money is more like it's, it's, a, it's an it's an it's an enabler. So that's how I just put it. It's there's not it's okay. just an enabler. Whenever you have you you know it helps you to do whatever you want to do. However, it's not it's not a hundred percent guarantee that you're going to do it with the, with money. So I rather I focus heavily on ideas, you know, because I believe that ideas can do a lot because ideas are unlimited, money is limited. And so if I'm focused on what money, you know, what I can do with money, then I cannot do so much because I don't have all the money in the world. So I always focus on what can I do that, you know, ideas can help me do. Because ideas, I can think beyond anything. I can, my ideas, my mind can go wild and I come up with a great idea and then I'll scale it up quickly. So to me, money is an enabler. It helps you get, it helps you get things done faster. However, it's not a, a guarantee that it's going to enable or going to, you know, move you from point A to point B. However, it's, it's a good thing to have, yeah. Okay, so I've, I've, heard, um, I've, heard, I've heard many young people say, uh, make this statement, uh, that it takes money to make money, right? Yeah. Um, uh, are you of that opinion? Do you think, do you really think it takes money, it that always takes money to make money? And if yes, why? If no, why? I don't, I, I, I'm not of that school of thought. How, I don't believe that it takes money to make money because I always believe that whatever you want to do right now, you can start it as, you know, in the very smallest possible state. So you see some people, they want to do something. However, they want to do it so big, you know, they, they don't understand that there's, there's something called humble beginnings. You want to do something big. You can start as little. You want to sell 10 million pro, uh, units. Start selling one or even start, start selling a fraction and then scale up from there. You know, because whatever building you see erected right now, you know, first came out as a plan, and then from a plan, it came out as mini mini miniature models on the table, right? So whatever, like if you see a Ferrari, right? A Ferrari 
has the, the, the toy the toy car version that kids can play with. Yeah. And so that means yeah. that whatever is big can be small. So whatever is big, so whatever you're trying to create, you know, don't just, I know you have the big picture in your head, right? But then don't start like that. Start, you know, very small. You can start from your garage. You can start from your bedroom. You know, most businesses that are very amazing started from their bedroom, started from their living room, started from their garage. So you start wherever you are with whatever you, you know, whatever you have. You don't need to have all the whole money in the world. So when they say money makes, you know, you need money to make money. No, I don't believe that. Because we, we said lag book with just $10. And that was the, the, the money we used to buy the domain name of the company. And the rest, we just used to run on ideas. We, we built the platform uh, on a free hosting service. And then, like I told you, we just kept meeting people to for favors and then gave them favors back in return. So it was not mostly ideas. We didn't use money. So if you say money to make money, no. Just people that throw money at things are people that are, are scared. You know, yeah. that they might not have the right idea. So they just want to throw money at things. However, money finishes very quickly. So I would advise you that, you know, once you, whatever you're trying to create, lean heavily on, on, on using ideas to scale it than using money because you don't have all the money in the world. Okay. Um, personally, what's your, what's your, what's your, money making strategy what's your investment strategy how do you where do you invest your money and how do you invest your money as a person well for me i invest my money on like okay i invest that's why i said uh entrepreneurship I oh, how do you money spend on... your money if you don't invest in case you don't invest how, how do you spend your money if you do invest how do you invest your money so I invest my money. I invest my money in my business, right? Because as, as I, I always, I, I trust. I trust whatever I do. So I put my money in my in my business. Uh, I when someone say put your money into this, okay. money in my business. The way I spend my money, I spend my money in, uh, mostly on. Um, on tech devices, on, on, on gadgets, because I love gadgets, because they make my life very easy. And then I also spend my money on vacations, because when you are so tired and you're and you're, you, you kind of burnt out, the easiest way to, to get your inspiration back is by just taking a break, you know, move somewhere, just travel somewhere, see a different, you know, a different, you know, environment, environment. You get inspired, and then you get inspired, and then you return back to where you are, and then you start again here. Okay, so does that mean Chidi doesn't, Chidi doesn't uh, believe in investing in um, shares, real estate, uh, bonds, and the likes? You don't do that? Oh, you invest in real estate, yeah, the house you live in, yes. I, but I, I don't, like, I don't, I won't just go buy a series of houses around the world and then get people to, you know, to live in them. I am a tech entrepreneur. I, I, I believe that houses are, uh, um, real estate to me is very slow because tech okay. entrepreneurship to me, you know, Tech entrepreneurship, you're, you have, you can have a month-to-month -month growth rate of 34%. Real estate yeah. cannot grow that fast. And so, yeah. uh, once you've experienced uh, the, the the scalability of tech, you would, when you look at real estate, you you would like, okay, this is really really slow. I I can't do this. It's too slow. So, uh, so I invest my money in tech because I believe that uh, in in if I, I I put my money in my tech business, it scales very quickly. However, if I put the money in real estate, it's really slow. So yeah. I don't. I don't. So, go when you make, so, when, so when you make money off um, tech, where do you then put the money back? You, you still put the money back. Uh, oh yeah. The entire you put the money back, back into the in tech. your put tech back company, into... or do you put money in other tech companies? I know. I put the money back into my tech companies. I've not said. I, I at the moment I'm not an investor. So maybe in the future I will switch from entrepreneurship into okay. investment, and then I start investing into other companies. But right now, I put the money back into, you know, if something gives you the money, then put it back into that same place so that it can generate you more money. So that's how I look at it. You know, so I, I keep putting it into my business. Right now, I am not, I am not uh, Apple. I'm not Facebook. So why should I stop? Why should I stop putting my money into, back, into, the, into the business, right? So I keep putting the money into the business because right now, we are, we are, not, we are not as big as we, we want to. Okay, fantastic. Um, um, now, let's, let's talk about... Let's talk about um, your fellowships. Like uh, when we put when we put the information house about uh, you being the first guest on the show, uh, one of the comments we got was that uh, someone said one person, like <laughs> when they saw the array of fellowships, you know, and um, 
um, all the all, and all the great places you've been. So now, tell us, uh, and it seems as though, of course, when I also went through your profile, it seems as though you have a special um, unfair advantage <laughs> or a special way that you do this. So what's your key secrets when it comes to um, attracting global fellowships, when it comes to getting into global, um, I mean, attracting global opportunities, getting into global um, fellowships? What's, what's your, I believe you have a special system routine yeah can you share it with us well when you're, when you're trying to apply for fellowships there are always there's always three things that you're always looking for all of them are all looking for the same thing they want to know uh why you're doing what you're doing in the first place what made you to start doing what you're doing so that they, so that they, they can understand what drives you and understand if this if this drive if this drive is going to last for long so if yeah. you can explain to them what drives you how why you're doing what you're doing in the first place that's one way to, you know, to, to, to get in. Yeah. Secondly, again, you should let them know what you're doing differently because that, what, there's, not, there's nothing you're doing right now that is an invention. You're, whatever you're doing is an innovation or you're, you're building upon whatever someone has built before. You know, whatever, it's not, you're not having a, 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 a brand new idea. Right? So they want to know what you're doing differently and how, you know, what makes you different, what makes you stand out from other, uh, other uh, competition out there. And then they want to know what you've done so far with what you, with, 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 with your, with your venture and how they can help you to get to the next point in your venture. Once you can explain to them, this is what I've done so far. And if I join this fellowship, this is what I want, this is what I want you, this is what I want you guys to help me get to, in, to the next point. And then they see that the two of you, your, your visions align together and they can give you what, what you want. Then there's a very huge chance to get into the fellowship. Amazing, amazing. Okay, um, um, that was that was that was pretty good. Now, finally, I mean, I, th I think we have uh, about five minutes to go. Um, I want you to talk about um, some of your biggest, like, what's what has been your greatest? What's what's that one thing that you know has been your greatest failure story? Something that we feel that and um, it was, um, I mean, it caused a huge, huge, huge setback for you. Wow. So I don't usually, I, I, I usually don't, I don't think I, I remember much about failure. Whenever, so I, I think I've failed so many times in my but life. But you haven't lost any product at all that failed woefully. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, Tell us about it. Okay, so there was this um, platform that my twin brother and I we created. It was called Oya oh yeah, Follow Me. So it was like a micro blogging platform, like 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 Twitter. Yeah. So we were we built the we built the platform and technology and created by some people called Presently. And so one day okay. we had we had twenty thousand users on the platform. Everything was going good. Then we received an email from Presently saying that they are going out of business. That they are going to you know they are, they are going to shut down their business. And shutting wow. down their business means that we are going to also shut down our business because Absolutely. they are the ones who like the technology. And so that was how everything just went down the drain. And so, yeah, that was our biggest. And what you thought, what you thought us was that make sure that whatever you're doing, you are, you are, you are a standalone unit, that you don't lean heavily yeah. on something else. Because the moment you yeah. lean heavily on no. something else, the moment they go, you're gone. Rented property. Yeah. Okay. Um, when it comes to fellow applying to applying to fellowships, have you ever been denied before? Oh yes, oh, of course. Why <laughs> not? I'm not. Su I'm, I'm not Superman. So uh, I there's this fellowship called Western World Fellowship. So I applied yeah. to Western World Fellowship in 2018, and then I didn't get in. I got into the interview stage, but I did not get into the main to, to the to yeah. the fellowship. And so I said to myself, okay, I was going to work harder and apply the next year. And so I worked harder on my business, grew it, and then the next year I applied again and I got in. So yes, I've gotten a rejection, definitely. But I, whenever I get a rejection, I don't say no to it. I keep applying until I get it. Amazing. Okay, um, your final words. What would you say to um, um, a young person out there um, who has an idea, who is scared to fail, and because of the fear for failure, wouldn't start um, something, wouldn't do something about it? Well, for me, I'll say failure is it should open your open your heart to failure. Failure is normal. It it matter. It's you learn you learn more from failure than you learn from success. So when you know, just do it. When you fail, you're you're definitely going to learn something. You're going to learn 
how what you know what not to do the next you know what not to do next and then you start again you know you can fail a million times however one success will clear all the entire failures you know one success makes everybody forget about all your failures you, you just have to get it right just once in your life just once just get it right once in your life and then you're you're fine so don't don't worry keep failing just get it once and then you're fine everybody will forget about the, the all the failures in the past everybody will forget about it trust me okay who are you who i mean what i mean you have any models in the tech industry that inspire you greatly yeah of course of course, of course. Oh, i i, I mean, for me for me, it's always, for me it's always I, the number one is always zuckerberg and the reason why i i i'm very i'm very excited about zuckerberg is the fact that he has he has always maintained he has always like maintained his growth and that he, did, he he doesn't even stop he didn't stop at facebook he went on to buy whatsapp you know instagram he's trying to like gather everything that works yeah. that is, is really insp- inspiring to me so zuckerberg is like my number one like my, i'm his number one fan wherever like wherever he is i'm his number one fan and um another person to me well it will be it will be it will be steve jobs because when I read about his story, it was I was inspired to the fact that he lost his company and found a yeah. way to get back into the company. Yeah. You, know, you you have to, you have to be super you have to be Superman to do that. You have to be Superman Absolutely. to do that. When key people kick out of the company and then you said, okay, I'm going to leave, and then you left and found a way to get back into the company and get back to the top. You are Superman. Yeah. That, that is what they call Superman type of power. They couldn't do it. Now. Yeah. They couldn't do it. Now. You're a genius. Obviously. So you know, when I read about that, I was like, okay, this is some new level of Superman. And so yeah, Amazing. so I'm 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 very I'm like his I'm so and apart from Steve Jobs, what who else again? Uh, yeah, another person I, I I really love uh is the the founder the, the CEO of Drop of Dropbox. Mm. The reason why I like him is because I I read about the story about him his encounter with uh, Steve Jobs, and it was inspiring, you know. The dude is like literally, you know, built Dropbox while he was waiting tables, and so I was mm-hmm. like, okay, so you were waiting tables, and then you were building a, a, a unicorn. That is like that is that's inspiring that you can be a waiter, you know, and then you while you are you know waiting tables, you are building a unicorn. I was like, okay, this shows that, you know, he didn't have pride. You know, some people say I can't wait tables. However, this guy knows what he was he was made of. He knows waiting mm-hmm. table was temporary, you know, and so he still mm-hmm. did it, and he knows that okay, it's just it's just for the meantime. I'm going to, you know, from here, I'm going to definitely um, build a unicorn. So, yeah, it just made me realize that, you know, pride is, nobody makes anything out of pride, you know, just, just start, start small and then move up. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so very much, um, Shidi, for, for coming on, on this show. Uh, thank you for sharing. Um, um, your story is one of the most inspiring I've found around, especially for young Nigerians. Um, um, and I just want to say that you should please not um, rest on your bars, um, keep pushing. And um, thank you very much for all that you do for artists, for publishers, for authors out there with um, Publisher. I will look forward to seeing you rise high and high and high. All right. So um, it's been thank an you. exciting time here uh, on the show. Um, and um, um, we've been and discussing and chatting with um, Chidi, the founder of Publisher, who sold two companies as a teenager, you know, thousands of US dollars, I mean, 50,000 US dollars, you know, as a young teenager, Nigerian, you know. So if Chidi can do it, you can do it greater. So thank you so much, um, Chidi, for coming on the show. Thank you, everybody. Um, um, we're going to have, of course, we'll see you guys next week again for another um, edition of the Isaac Show where we spotlight uh, amazing stories of creators, um, innovators, and disruptors across Africa. Thank you so much, um, Chidi, once again. Thanks for coming. Yeah, right. I appreciate it. All right, bro. Cheers. Cheers.